Hi, welcome to High Fashion Sewing in Grand Junction, Colorado. This is Bernina Jeff. Today we're going to do a class on settings for the 7 Series, the 5 Series, and the new 4 Series. Uh, the settings on all these machines are relatively the same, and you know which ones machines that these apply to because they have the large black jumbo bobbin. So if you have that big large black jumbo bobbin, these settings are uh, important and they'll help customize all your different uh, uh, sewing preferences. Something you may not know is we have uh, available for us on the Bernina website a simulator. These simulators give you a computer screen version of what you're seeing on your sewing machine. That's what I'm going to be teaching off of. So you can go to the Bernina website, go to their machines and products, and go into their support or you know brochure area and you can download a uh, simulator. I, uh, I've done this for all my different models so I have a 590 simulator going here I'm going to get it booted up and I also have a 790 simulator. Um, it's a great tool. Bernina spends a lot of money making these simulators so you can actually learn your machine without having it in front of you. Let's say you're going on a trip put it on a little laptop and you can play with your machine on the airplane for four hours if we ever get a fly again. <coughs> so I'm going to move the 590 over here to the corner and I'm going to boot up the 790 simulator. And if you look at these simulators, they look just like the screen on your sewing machine. So as you push the buttons on the simulator, you can relate to what the buttons are going to be on your sewing machine. So that's, that's how I'm going to teach this and I'm going to bounce back. In class we have 7 series, how many have 7 series? And then we have 5 series, 4 series, so okay. So we got 5s and 7s, this is going to be perfect. I, um, they have simulators for all the models. I put on the, the highest version of the model because that has the most features. Uh, anybody have a 790 in here? Okay, alright. So um, the settings are what you can program on your sewing machine to your preference. So if you want it to tie off at the beginning of the stitch, you can turn that off or on. If you want to tie off at the end of your stitch, you can turn that off and on and you can select a couple different options on how you want that tie off to happen. You know, there's probably an infinite number of combinations you can have. You know, there's at least, we're going to go through 30 or 40 different settings today. The big thing is, is knowing where they're at. And what my little twist on this is, is I let you know what each setting, how I like them and why I like them, and why your machine should be set up that way or why it shouldn't be set up that way. And that way, when you leave class, your machine's gonna be set up according to your preferences already. So there are two level of settings, and I need to get the concepts down on your uh, black buttons on your machine, or if you're in your 5 Series, go to your 5 Series with a little house on the main screen, touch that, and you have a gear down here. There's two little sprockets. This is what I call the global settings. Anytime we change a setting with the sprockets or the gears, it changes every it changes it for everything you do with your machine. That's what I call the global settings. Now, when you're in your screen and you see this little circle eye, this information button, that changes it only for that stitch. So if you click on that stitch, you have another menu that you can change and alter or do different things with. So it only changes it for that stitch. So if you change a straight stitch, tension, but not tension, that's a different thing. But if you change a straight stitch length and you go to zigzag, zigzag will not have changed. It'll only change the straight. But when you go back to that straight stitch that you had altered it, it will remember it. Bernina is the only brand of machine that has temporary stitch memory. So if you alter a, a stitch, it remembers it until you hit clear on that stitch or you turn your machine off. So it's a, it's a really nice feature. I, I have other brands and I'll bounce back between zigzag and straight stitch and every time I go back to straight stitch I have to re program it the way I like to. This lets you bounce back. Very nice. 
So the concept's important. So I call it the one stitch at a time setting. That's kind of this little information circle I. And then the sprockets or the gears are your global settings. And I'm going to go through every single menu in the global settings today. And then kind of explain what each. Some are important, some I bounce past pretty fast. So here we go. Let's go into our global settings. So touch your, I'm going to go to the 590 for now. Let's touch our sprockets and gear. And you have a series of menus here on the 590 or 790 it is six different menus of uh, options we're gonna go just right the same way as it's showing on the on the screen there the very first box is our stitch options you have it depicted by a straight and zigzag stitch so we open that up our first option is tension settings when we change our tension settings here it changes it forever until you go back and rechange it. So this is kind of a nice option. Let's say you're going to be sewing with a fussy thread like a monofilament or a funny thread. You know it sews better at a plus one tension setting. You could go into here, touch setting and add plus one zero zero and it's going to add one unit of tension to every stitch you select in the sewing mode. So and if you're finished with that fussy thread, then you come in here and you want it back to default. For anything with a yellow circle on it, if you click on that, it brings it back to default that fast. You don't have to remember what it is. So that's a nice feature. So remember, circle by a yellow, if you touch it, it brings it back to default. So it's, and if you just find that your machine sews better at a plus 0.25, leave it at that. It's just a value. Now, when you do change this globally, um, it will show yellow on your main menu, and we'll show you that later. I'm gonna I'm gonna click this up to just a little bit. Call that good. Now, look up on the on the task bar up here. So you have the the first area we're at is the gears or sprockets, and the next menu we pushed was the stitches, and then. It brought us to the, and then we clicked on the tension. So click on the little one, go back to your stitch option. This brings you one layer back instead of coming all the way out, all the way back in. You see that cookie, co cookie crumbs or bread crumbs up there? All right, so the next one's a speedometer. What's this pertain to? The speed, maximum speed control. So all your machines have a slider on the front that changes your speed control. This is like an internal speed control. And let's say you're sewing with a granddaughter and she has a really heavy foot and you don't want to have to always trust that uh, slider bar. You can bring this down to a maximum speed of whatever speed you want, 300, 295. And then your speed bar will only, even at maximum, only go to whatever it's set here. And then it will go to half of whatever it's set there with that speed bar. So it's a nice little feature. I'm a lead foot, so I'm going to leave it at the full. Let's touch our cookie crumbs again on the stitch and zigzag. And now we have a needle with a knot at the top, or at the bottom of it. Now, if you do not know what an icon means, our friend is this question mark. Everybody see the question mark? If you click on the question mark first, and then click on an icon, a, if there is help, a help menu will come up. So what's it say? It secures stitches at the beginning of a pattern. I love this if I'm doing now all these masks and constructing clothing, but if I'm chain stitching a bunch of pieces on a quilt, I don't want to have it stop and do a securing stitch each time, so I'll turn it off. One of the very first models of the 7 Series did not have this feature and the consumers screamed so loud they fixed it within a month because they needed to be able to turn off the securing stitch. So I'm going to get out of the help menu. I hope, no I didn't, I got out of the whole thing. Well I'll let that boot up. It doesn't take long. These simulators are great. Don't you see how you could just kind of play around? I don't know if they'll load on an iPad. I know they'll load on like a Surface or a, or a laptop. 
So I'm going to go back to my uh, menu of stitches. So to turn the securing stitch off, there's a slide bar. So if you touch it, there's a red circle, that means off. Touch it again, there's a green line, that means it's on. All right, the next one over here, this is supposed to depict a little finger on all your four buttons on the front of your machine by your needle. I call it a creepy finger. A creepy, <laughs> creepy hand. It just, it just looks kind of weird. But in here, there's a wealth of options. So all of your buttons on your machine, the, the presser foot lifter, the scissors trimming button, the reverse button, the pattern end button, needle down button and securing all have options to them. So we all here? Mm -hmm. Good. All right, let's, let's go into the presser foot options. So with the needle in the upper position is where this one makes a difference. When we have the needle that stops in our fabric, one of the last ones we do is going to pertain to that one. So this only pertains to when your needle is up. Two millimeters is the normal height that uh, when, it, when it stops and raises, not when you raise the pressure, but when it stops, when you take your foot off the gas, it'll raise two millimeters. That's just enough to kind of move your project around, position it right. Now, if you have four layers of polar fleece, two millimeters isn't enough. So you can bump that up all the way to seven millimeters, which is a quarter inch of height. Now, I have some people that say, when I stop, I don't want my fabric to move, so put it down to zero. So it, it doesn't have the hover feature. So you can bump that all the way down to zero if that's your feature you want. I bounce between zero and 2.0, personally. So I always remember, if I'm doing something thick, to go in there and, and make, it, make it high. All right, so that, I'm gonna go back to the red crumbs of the creepy finger. And let's go into our scissors or our trimming function. So we have an option to, when we press the scissors button, that it trims. Or if you click the little knot, it will not trim. And you have two options with a type of securing stitch. It'll do a little five dot pattern. Or if we touch this little line, you could do a stitch in a row up to six stitches long. I have a hard time using this dot in a line because I stop at the end of the fabric and if I hit the scissors button, it sews off of the fabric. And I have found with the five and seven series. So my my knot button yep. is gray, but the other ones are all shaded. So I can't touch them. Touch, touch the knot if you can. Touch the knot one. Uh -huh. And then it okay, highlights. Good that. point. Here's what she said. This <coughs> this knot was gray and she's trying to touch the gray ones. So you have to touch the knot to activate it. Okay. Now, I was going to make a point. Um, I have found on the 7 Series and the 5 Series, any of these machines that have these big bobbins, if you hit the cut button when there's no fabric underneath the needle, you have a good chance of jamming it up. You're going to have, to, you're going to have a knot or a, a wad the next time you start sewing because the thread catcher cannot work properly without fabric between the needle. and the, So try to remember, and everybody out there, try to remember when you stop, make sure that there's fabric underneath the needle when you hit the trimmer. If there's not, you can raise a presser foot and trim it off the old-fashioned way. But I have found that you can damage the cutter system if it keeps trying to cut in midair. All right, so my favorite is this little five dot. I like to keep that on when I use the trimmer feature. The other thing that's automatic when you use a trimmer feature, the presser foot will raise after it's trimmed. Kind of a neat. I have another brand that doesn't raise unless you tell it to, and it's like I'm waiting for the foot to raise, and it just I just like the way this feature works. Can you use the foot pedal to raise it if you if you're used to that? Yes. Okay. There's a, like hit your heel. Yeah. Either it'll it take a it'll heel. raise the needle. So we have a little reverse button here too. This I I went back on my my breadcrumbs, and I went to the finger again. So we have a reverse button, and the reverse button, you can have just a regular reverse, or you have a backstepping reverse. A backstepping is a feature or function that will backstep up for 200 exact stitches in reverse of what it just stitched forward. Wow. So 
the regular reverse doesn't have that many feature many stitches so I I like the functionality of this back stepping so I leave it on all the time if I'm stitching out a little tulip pattern and I want to back step it 20 or 30 stitches I can do that with this feature activated and it doesn't seem to counteract any other features so I leave it on all the time now back to our cookie trail, we're gonna to go to our finger again. Now, this little triangle with the dot, dot, dot on the bottom, that's called pattern end. And this will help us how the uh, machine acts when we touch the pattern end. The pattern end button, you need to touch that, activate it in the middle of a stitch pattern. If you do this in a straight stitch, it'll take two more stitches and then do this process. But it's usually like if you're doing a tulip pattern or any decorative stitch, there's 20 or 30 stitches involved in that pattern. The machine knows what the end stitch of that one is, and it will do what you program it to do. I like it to program a securing knot, and I have my little five pattern. I have it trim, and I raise the foot. So I have it do all these four functions every time I hit that pattern end. You can pick and choose which ones you want by touching the buttons, and they gray out. But this little pattern end feature is a nice little feature. It's on the face of your machine, and it has to be touched while you're in the middle of a pattern. You can stop sewing, touch it, and start sewing again. It doesn't have to be sewing, you know, needle Never moving. And it, it really doesn't function really well with a straight stitch, but it'll function well with a zigzag if you want it to stop on the same side of the zigzag every time. So you know you're zigzagging, sometimes you stop on the right, sometimes you stop on the left. Or like a blanket stitch. Too. Exactly. It'll go to the very end of the blanket stitch and then stop. And then you may want to pivot. So you may want to turn off these securing. You can turn all these off and then just pivot. So it's, it's a little feature that we're blowing your mind away already, aren't we? Yeah. But you're being exposed to it. And now it's recorded. So... There's a gal that does it for the Missouri um, Quilt Factory, and she does this whole thing in about 20 minutes. So I, I like to expand a little bit more of what's going on. So I'm going to go back to my button finger here. And see this needle that looks like it's penetrating the fabric, it's below the fabric? Mm -hmm. This is telling us what we want the machine to do when the needle is in the lower position and we stop. So we, can, we have three choices here. We can have the Presser foot stay against the fabric with the needle down. This is great if you don't want it to move. The middle one, it'll come up about a quarter inch, or maybe not, maybe three or four millimeters, so you can pivot. And the very far right one is if you're doing polar fleece or four layers of terry cloth. It comes up really high to pivot. So my favorite setting is the middle. Because usually when I'm sewing with the needle down, I'm pivoting or I'm putting a new piece of fabric in there, a chain piecing or something like that. So that's just my favorite. And again, everybody's got a reason for a different uh, setting. That's why Bernina made so many of these set of settings. Back to our cookie crumb trail. Now we have a securing feature. And when we hit the little knot on our um, machine surface here, is there one? Yeah, there's a little knot on the 790. Uh, there may not be one on a 5 Series, is there? No. No. They kind of eliminated this because it is covered by some of the other settings. But on the 7 Series, you may want to program this knot to do a different feature. So it's it's one I rarely even change. I just leave it on the little, the, the looks like a dice pattern, a little 5 dot. So we got through the six menus in the uh, the finger setting. So let's go back to our stitch settings. Now, on the seven series, we have the option to program the foot control. Now, on the 590, is that the same option? It uh -huh. shows it. Yeah. So, on the Bernina, Bernina is one of the few machines that comes standard on the upper end machines with the heel kick feature on your um, foot controls. Does everybody know how to use a heel kick on the foot control? So you hit it and it'll do a half a stitch. Can't live without it. <laughs> now I don't know how to use it. I use it accidentally all the time. Yeah. And I know it that's why, but I yeah. 
have figured out exactly what it I had a so, machine that didn't have that foot pedal, and I had to buy it because I was so used to it. Mm -hmm. Why doesn't it do what I need it to do? And the Bernina foot pedals, let's say you have a 3 Series that doesn't come with this, you can transfer them back and forth. So all the Bernina foot, all the new ones work with all the different Berninas. Oh, good. So if you hit the little heart, you can program that kick to do a securing, a cut, a lift. And this can surprise you sometimes when you're used to just doing a half a stitch and you hit it and it trims your fabric <laughs> or trims your thread. Yeah. I, I, so you've got to beware. This little heart's a great feature, but we're so used to the standard just needle up, needle down. But the feature's there, so I wanted to, to mention that. Okay. So we have done all the stitch settings so far on our global settings. Now we're going to hit our gears again. And I'm going to go through the embroidery settings last. So if some people don't have embroidery, they don't have to sit through this. So remind me when I'm done with the sewing part to go back and do embroidery. So the next one I'm going to do is our little person here. This is a little personal settings of colors and such. So I think for this, I'm going to go with a, a yeah, we're going to go with a, ooh, that's, we're going to go with the blue background today. And you have textures here. I like the Swiss mountains or these, this little dot texture. So you've got the color option and the dot texture. And your bar up here, if you touch it, you can type in anything you want and it will display as you're turning it on. I have some, my husband was so happy I got this machine. You go girl. Yeah, so I, I can type in my company here. You have to use the, uh, you can't use the keyboard. <laughs> and uh, it takes a little getting used to this arrangement of letters. Oh, it's not like a typewriter. Oh, yeah. So don't, you have to be a little patient. Then once you, whoops. And when you click the bar, it erases everything. So you better just delete one by one. So I'm just putting in high fashion. And then you hit the green check mark. And now the next time it boots up, high fashion will run across the screen for a few seconds. So this is your wallpaper section, and I'm going to click my, my gears, and now my wallpaper has automatically changed. Oh, good. All right. So the next one, the bottom left, is an eyeball. And I really want everybody to stay away, keep your eyes open for this one, because it's very important. Uh, it's got some features in there. This is the machine watching for upper thread on the top one. And the machine watches for bobbin thread. Now, because thread has a lot of characteristics, sometimes you have plenty of thread in your bobbin and top, and the machine keeps telling you you're out of thread. It's really frustrating when you have an hour to go to get a project done, and it's Saturday afternoon and nobody to call to figure this out. So you can turn these monitors off. If you click over here, it closes the eyeball. So you don't have to have thread in your machine to sew. When is there a good time to not have thread to sew? When you're when, cleaning it. When you, well, my mom gave me a sh sheet of ruled paper to learn to sew. She took the thread out of it, and I had to sew down those lines until I was totally done with the paper. That's how I learned to sew straight. So this is a good way to teach somebody to sew. Some people take vellum, and they poke holes in it, and then you got a pounce pad. You can actually pounce a uh, pattern onto your quilt and you can repeat it many times because it's just like a template so there's a lot of reasons to not need thread in your fabric thread in your machine but the biggest reason I like to show this is you'll be sewing along you got a full bobbin and your machine every 20 stitches says you have no bobbin thread these are because there's very sensitive monitors inside your machine and they get you know, dust, debris on them, or the bobbin case gets a little scratched and the machine can't see it right. So if, I, if I'm not embroidering especially, um, I'll just turn that off and, and then make an appointment or make a note that next time it's into the dealer to have him or her adjust that bobbin monitor. But I usually keep them on if I'm not having any issues. But, you know, if you, 
turn them off if your machine's sewing just fine and then just make an appointment or whatever have it it's usually a quick little fix something as simple as all the mirrors on your jumbo bobbin have worn off if you look at your black jumbo bobbin and of only about half of the mirrors are really bright swap that out try another bobbin a lot of times that fixes your bobbin issues the bobbins are they can wear out that did that to my upper and lower thread though yeah I mean that's I called you and you showed me how to do that so so it is you know it's good to know that now we have a little speaker the middle bottom one and you got four different tone choices and no speaker choices so you can go to silent mode if you want I tend to like the very first one really well there's some doubles and some different uh, tones it makes so if you find one you like you can we can set it here and that's all that menu does or if you want to go totally you know silent mode you can turn them all off by clicking there so let's go back to our sprockets and gears now the next meet the very first meet of this was the stitches the next meet of this is the sewing machine icon the sewing machine icon we can change our language and I've always threatened, you know, that customer has given me just a bad day. I was going to change it to Cantonese or something, but I never have. English is strong enough for me, hard enough for me to figure out. So let's go back to the sewing machine icon. All right, the next middle top one is a light, and I have a YouTube all on this one. Because for some reason, the 7 Series, the light will turn itself off, and people call my lights are burnt out. I want to. I need to have them replaced. And I step them through this process of turning the light off or on right here on the bottom, and it fixes it every time. There's 30 LEDs to this 7 Series machine. They all can't burn out at the same time. So, and I usually keep them at 100%. I need every bit of light I have, and you can change the intensity of the the monitor. I usually leave it at 100%. And that's just the intensity of you know, the other. And I've had these machines on in the sewing machine uh, demo floor for over 3,000 hours, and I haven't seen even a change in the, in the monitor at all. So these monitors are really good LEDs. So not that you need to leave them on 24 seven, but they'll last many, many years. All right, back to the sewing machine icon. And the next one I have a YouTube on is this screen calibration. Once we touch this, I can't do it on my... Uh, the 5 doesn't have it, yeah. No, the 5, five does not have this right. because the 5 has a different type of screen. But the 7 series has two layers to their screen. The top layer is like the sensitivity and the bottom layer is the icon. So you have to match up the sensitivity screen with the lower screen. So. A white screen will come up on this option and a bullseye will come. You need a um, stylus to touch the bullseye and make sure you do not touch your knuckle to the screen and you'll, it'll move to the next place. So touch the other bullseye and touch the next place, three bullseyes and you're done. And now you've lined up your icons to your sensitivity screen. And if you accidentally touch this, don't turn your machine off in the middle of it. Because then your sensitivities will be so far off you can't even get to the buttons. But they have made a back doorway, and if that ever happens, go to my YouTube and show you how to go to the back door to calibrate it. Now, bottom left is a factory settings tool. You can touch, don't touch any of these buttons over here on the right hand side. You can um, set all your settings back to factory. This is something you'd probably do if you're selling a machine or something like that. Gets all your personal settings out of it. So I've, I haven't had to use this. So the next one is our wrench. This is our tool area. So the very first one is a 3A button, and it gives you a menu of how to calibrate your 3A, your buttonhole foot. You know a buttonhole foot needs calibration is if you sew a buttonhole and one side of it sews and then it goes to sew the other part and only goes about halfway. If your two sides of your buttonhole do not end up even, it needs to be calibrated. Now, it doesn't, it rarely happens that the two numbers A and B are equal. 
If one's 65 and the other one's 85, and it makes a perfect buttonhole, that's okay. It's just a value. So don't keep doing it until they're even. It will never happen. So it's just a process that shows you how to do it. So if you like those perfect buttonholes, calibrate it every six months or and so. And you just test it? Yep. Actually, you have to have the buttonhole foot on, and it goes beep, 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 and it says success. And then do a test buttonhole. It should be perfect. Then we have an update option on the 790. 790, uh, Bernina updates their machines every time a new foot comes on the market. So they have a new foot, a number 73 foot. So they have to update it so your list of feet machine knows how to act with that foot. Or if they find a bug in the program or a misspelling, they'll, they'll update it. I like, to have, I like to do the update myself for customers. It comes on a USB stick, it has to be properly formatted, and it has to, own, oh, one stick works for one update, then you have to uh, redo the stick. Because it puts your backup information, it writes all your settings on a backup, does the update, and then reloads all your settings back into it. And I wouldn't say all settings, but most of your settings. And if you wanted to just send your settings to a USB stick, that's probably what I'd do before I'd start the process. And then you have your settings in a hard, hard format. And above tells you which version it is. Um, so Bernina does have a new update out there. So as you bring your machine in for servicing, we put new updates on it without even knowing it. And if it's critical, like that there's a, a flaw that they need to fix, I call my customers or I leave an email saying, oh, good. anybody with a 7 Series, anybody with a 5 Series, bring it in at your convenience. We will update it for you while you wait. Okay? And then we have this little broom or the sweeper. This is called cleaning the thread catchers. And I have a YouTube on this because most people, I've had a person that had their machine for two years and didn't know what how this process worked you know so you, you go through the whole steps you remove the presser foot and needle you lower the feed dogs you move the stitch plate then you have to touch this little blue link and it's kind of hard to touch with your finger you almost need a icon it'll blink and it'll flash a little um, hourglass then you go and touch the trim button on your machine and it should move out the thread catchers to one side. Then use a tweezers or a little brush, clean out any debris in there. And then you do the second link, you roll down to step number three, and you do the second link and you move the thread catcher back in. If you're having difficulty with moving it back in, you can always switch off your machine and reboot it, and it'll move it back in when it reboots. So it's gonna find initialization. And I would clean the thread catcher every couple months, every month if you're a heavy sewer. And if you haven't done it, the machine will tell you after so many hundreds of cut cycles. There's actually a place where it tells us how many times it's gone through a cut cycle. And the machine counts that so you make sure it gets cleaned. Again, it if you. It tattles on you. Yeah. <laughs> so. YouTube on that if you don't. And I have a YouTube on oiling, so let's touch the oiling process. So, Bernina used to have a little red dot you put oil in and it just, it would get all clogged up and the oil wasn't going where it was supposed to. So, this is their method of showing you how to oil it. I have a YouTube where you can just take the top plate off and oil from the, from the top down. It takes all this out of, uh, out of the issue of, taking this apart and then trying to get all that back in. So, now do these but, machines use different oil? No, it uses the oil it came with or my red cap oil. I, I carry a red cap oil with a two and a half inch long uh, tip that gets right in, in the top, gets oiling it really well. But the red cap is what's designed for these machines. All right, let's close up the uh, wrench. And in bordering, this is putting the inverter unit to a packing position, so it's really, really needed. All right, so let's see on the sewing machine. 
we have go to your sewing machine icon we have one more menu which is a circle I this is our information <coughs> area of the machine the first one tells us its version software version it tells us different things it tells us the serial number so the serial number cannot be scratched off it's internally in the machine it tells us the number of stitches how many stitches since last maintained and how many cleaning cycles does everybody have that? Mm -hmm. Look, who has a million stitches or more? Okay. All right, good. So if you're monitoring this and you want to know between three and six million stitches is a good time to have it maintained. Or every year to 18 months, whichever comes first. So this, we go to this to find versions and, and we record this on our maintenance log the text record this information so it gives us some hint of the the use the little telephone uh, a lot of this will put I'll put uh, my information from the store in here Does everybody have high fashion in the information yeah. that means that myself and the text went through this machine before it went into your hands we made sure it was sewn in and passed all the the technical tests. So let's touch the circle I again. Now a log, this is something for the technicians. This this machine actually takes a log of all its errors. Or if it had an issue, you know, when the, when the gears come up, have everybody had the gears come up when it's got bound? Mm -hmm. Well, the gears come up because the machine's protecting itself. So don't be too afraid of this. It'll, most of the time, you just have to rotate the handle backwards a turn and it'll clear itself. It's either because there's a bent needle or a thread jam somewhere. So don't, don't get too alarmed by the gears. You can actually make the gears happen by holding onto the hand wheel while you're trying to sew. It's just protecting itself. But it will log that. It'll say main shaft bind or something like that. And then the techs can look at that and see. It's kind of like in your car reading the codes. Did ever say stupid operator? Yeah. <laughs> operator error. It hasn't. The Swiss are smarter than that. <laughs> And then there's another icon for machine ID. So this is a alphabetical ID. Um, machines can be upgraded. The 790 went to a 790 plus, and we needed an ID so that plus would only be used during to the upgrade could only be used by one machine. So that's how there's machine ID in there too. And there's an upgrade option. So if we the next upgrade might be embroidery, you know, gold or whatever, if they ever come up with something. And it can be an added to the machine depending upon what they feel the features are needed. So let's all go back to an icon of our um, sprockets. And we've covered all of the uh, menu items here except embroidery. So let me go through embroidery real quick, even if you don't have embroidery. You may want it in the future. So I'm going to touch my embroidery icon. And we have nine menu items on embroidery. And we can go this through this pretty quickly because some of them are exactly the same as uh, in the sewing mode. So in the embroidery mode, we can adjust our top tension. So I have the top tension at a minus one. I must have been getting embroidery I didn't like, so I adjusted the tension to minus one so the top would pull underneath. So you, and this will adjust only for the embroidery mode. It wouldn't have any effect to your sewing stitches. And again, the speed, maximum speed on embroidery. If you're using metallic thread, you want to come down to about 350. Because it makes a difference. You're, if you're going full blast with metallic thread, it's going to break. And this is a option if you own a version 8 software it will position the center where you put the center in your design hoop calibration it teaches you how to tell the machine where the center of the hoop is and I would recommend going through this process with the large oval maxi jumbo hoop the large hoops need to be calibrated so the machine knows where the center is when I do my embroidery basics class, I show everybody how to do this. But you can follow it on screen. You just won't do it on the simulator. 
All right, this little roll with uh, arrows, this is fabric thickness. When you're embroidering, you might be embroidering on that polar fleece, so you might have to raise that presser foot up towards not dragging on the polar fleece. Normal, two layers of fabric and a stabilizer, four millimeters work great. 7.5 works great on terry cloth, and 10 works good on real puffy stuff. And this keeps the foot from dragging on your, your, your project. And this is your thread away option. This needle with the area, arrows left or right. Uh, it's a feature when you're embroidering that when it finishes and cuts a stitch, it will pull the thread out of the fabric and bury it with the next stitch. It does take a little extra time and the back of your project looks a little more fuzzy because there's a lot of uh, threads on the back. So I tend to keep it turned off unless I've got a whole bunch of cuts and it's a really small lettering and stuff. That's a feature that's nice. And then we have the securing stitch option. I leave these turned on. There's securing option at the beginning and securing option at the end of your project. And when a digitizer makes a design, they'll put securing stitches in and this will actually allow it to skip them or add them. The time when I would want to not have a securing stitch at the beginning, at the end of a stitch, is if I'm quilting with the embroidery, continuous line quilting designs on, on a quilt. You can embroider a beautiful quilt design on a quilt, but you may not want a big knot showing on the back of your quilt. So you would turn that knot feature off and maybe bury those threads or tie them yourself. So that's, that's a time when you may not want all those knots showing. And we have our trim feature. Our trim feature on the 790, I always leave the trimming between colors activated. This little trim with the finger, this machine when you're embroidering, it'll take five or six stitches, and if you want it to stop to trim that tail, you can activate it. The new machines, the default is deactivated. So if you're always stopping the machine to trim the tail, you may want to activate this. I like it deactivated, personally. And then the distance between trims, you can, on the 790 plus, and what do you have on the 5 series? It says 6 millimeters. It's on there. It's on. Can you go all the way down to one millimeter? Yeah. Uh, I would recommend yeah. one millimeter trims. Okay. That's the thickness of a width of a needle. So if you're doing a whole bunch of lettering and stuff, it'll jump over there and not trim if this is at seven. Yeah. If it's at one, it'll secure, jump over, trim, and start over. You don't have all those little lines to trim out of your lettering. Okay. Good. Or if you're doing a whole bunch of stars in the and you know they're just close enough to where it's not trimming, bring it down to one. I like the one feature. Bernina's the only one that trims that tight, but I know. So see, you're setting up if you are embroidering. Now, we have a tape measure. You got the option of working in millimeters or inches. Most of the time, my brain works better in inches. But I love millimeters if I'm doing really small items, because I know what two millimeters is, I know what four, but you know, 10 millimeters, 24 millimeters, those are a little harder to remember. So leave it in inches, you can always swap it back. So that wasn't too hard, the embroidery. Again, that was fairly quick. So let's go back to our, our gear option. So have we covered everybody's menu items there? Good. So I'm gonna go back, get to my home, and let's find our stitches. In the 590 or 5 series, you might have to touch the little stitch option. So we just covered all the global settings pretty much. Now there's a few extra global settings on this menu page and they are on the left hand side here. We have a setting for our uh, tension. And this tension setting only pertains to the stitch that was on the me menu. So if you're sewing and you want just as one stitch to have a different tension, that's, this is where you'd set it. You don't have to go into your global settings all the time. And then once it's changed, you see it's yellow. You can look up there, quick reference, it's yellow. And then right next to it to the right is our needle stop position. 
If you click that, it'll stop down in your fabric, click it again, it'll stop out of your fabric. All right. Older models, you used to have to hold in your needle up, needle down. If you do it on this model, it doesn't do anything. And I've had a lot of customers, how do I keep my needle from stopping up all the time? And it's right there, it's so simple, because you know, you're doing a project, sometimes you want to swap that back and forth a few times. And then right below the tension, we have a symbol of a needle. And this is kind of a, uh, not only a needle, but it is a stitch plate security option. And over here on the far right, there's a needle with a little bow tie on it. This is your needle reminder. You can actually tell the machine that you're using a leather tip needle size 75. It does not change the functionality of the machine. It's like a post note inside your machine. You remember what, if you get in the habit of changing it here all the time, then you know what needles in your machine. Some people use a little uh, post note on the outside. Some people have the Velcro thing. Yeah, so this is a needle binder. Now it also has all these different widths of twin needles and triple needles. So if you select one of these needles, the machine knows there's a 2.5 millimeter twin needle in there. It will not do a wider, wider stitch than that needle's capable of doing. You won't break your twin needle the first time because it zigzagged too wide. You know, that's a $7 needle and you're broken on the first try. That's time for tears. And it will remind it, depending upon what width of plate you have on. So down along the bottom, you can buy a 5.5 millimeter plate if you're doing garments and certain stitches. Some people love this 5.5 millimeter plate. But when you put it on, come into this mode and tell the machine what plates on it, especially when you're doing a zero millimeter plate. Do they interchange between like a 500 and the... The 5, the 7, and the 4 are all exactly the same plates. So if you buy one, you know, they made the 5 series because it's a mini version of the 7 series. It's a lot lighter to carry to class. So everything you buy for your 7 machine will work on your 5 machine. And the navigation's the same. That's the other reason. But you don't the have older to... 430 won't swap, will they? Uh, it has to have a black bobbin. Anything with a black bobbin swaps. Okay. And then you can buy a punch attachment and a, and a cut attachment. What are those big wide needles, like that one single one and down? The that is one? a good point. This is a wing needle, and it's done in heirloom sewing. It makes a big hole, and then you do a zigzag next to it, and it actually pulls it apart. So if you see heirloom uh, christening gowns and that sort of thing, you'll see this used in a lot. And then they do a wing needle with a stitch too. So you can it really, have, I've seen people embroider with this wing needle. It makes a really interesting embroider feature. Now, I have, we worked on a machine in uh, technical in back in the repair room. We couldn't figure out why on an eight series, why it wasn't threading the needle. And everything was programmed right. Well, the customer, it looked like the right needle, but it, they had selected the wing needle and on the 8 series it won't go try to automatically thread so it took us a while to figure this out so when in doubt you know we always want to have the normal needle on there because it does change how your machine if you select a twin needle it will show on the screen what it's going to look like when you go into the sewing mode so if you if you want to go ahead and bounce across the mat it's kind of yeah. fun and you only use one bobbin thread. The bobbin catches both needles as it goes through, so the, the parallel stitch looks like a zigzag on the back. And I've done decorative stitches with uh, twin needles. It's kind of, and it gives an interesting shadow effect. All right, uh, that's the needle. So we have our foot recognition area. So if you touch the foot, so always be in the habit of selecting the proper foot. Now. So much to sew without it, Some, Yeah. <laughs> Every level of machine has a different variety of how it. Some, if you just select a foot, it tells you. Uh, description of it. And on the 790 series and 770s, it uh, actually, you know, changes functionality. So on the 790, I mean the 590 or the 7 series, or the 5 series. When you touch a foot, does it just give you a, a description on there, or does it actually just change it? It just changes. Good. 
that's good because that that is true foot recognition so if you put this number two foot it knows where the needle can go and where it can't go so it'll protect itself so that's why I always want you to select the right foot the foot you have on there so foot recognition is a great great feature it reads those on the bigger feet anything that's more than 5.5 millimeter it has that sidecar with the mirrors on there that's what it's reading it doesn't read exactly every foot but it gives it a group so it knows if it's a D foot so if you put a D foot on and you don't lower your upper feed dog it will not let you sew so it knows what different types of feet can can and can't be used and that again that's kind of a global setting now do you see this presser foot with a little weight above it the 5 series I think starts at default at 70 and that 7 series defaults at 50 that's the amount of pressure on the presser foot again if I'm sewing polar fleece I'm gonna be down in my 20s if I'm sewing thin silk I'm gonna be up in my 70s and that's for the 7 series so, and then if you don't know where it needs to go you just press the button that's surrounded by yellow and it goes back to factory default so that's your presser foot pressure the four series, some of the four series have it on the side. You have a dial option. Now over here below that presser foot, you have a nine millimeter, nine mm. This is very similar, gets you the same place as the needle. So they have, but it tells you right here, if I switch this, it's gonna put 5.5 on, on my uh, icon. And then let's close that fly out and this little zigzag slash straight stitch those are my feed dogs when the little mountains are above the zigzag of the the bottom that means your feed dogs are up when they're below they'll be yellow and the mountains will be below the line so there's a little sensor in there that tells if the feed dogs are up or down very important when you're free motion quilting like with a stitch regulator or embroidering that those are right and it'll tell you on the bobbin th this bobbin button does several different things if you have a 790 it actually will tell you what percentage of bobbin you have left that's part of the added feature on the other other uh, um, models it pretty much will show you how to install the bobbin in the bobbin case and um, it will stop sewing when you're out of thread on almost all the models. If it's an embroidery type model, it will stop sewing. So, because the bobbin quits spinning and the machine can't see the spinning anymore on those mirrors. All right, so those are all your sort of global settings. Um, next, we're gonna go into our circle I or our stitch per stitch setting. So let's pick stitch number eight. It's the honeycomb or heirloom stitch. And now let's touch this circle I and we have highlighted gray little icons here and sometimes there's more icons below here so if you see a little bit of an icon peeking underneath you have to raise that up and I'm not going to go through every setting here this is more just showing you how to get there because you're you're getting to know your your uh, sewing machine should have gone through this circle I in a lot of these settings. But do you see this little, uh, some of you might have this double line, a 790 does. This is the uh, long stitch or your basing stitch. Who has that option? Probably just one. Well, this is a basing stitch option. And when you touch it, it takes one stitch out of the pattern. And you can create some really crazy looking stitches from this is your honey home stitch. You take one stitch out of the pattern, it turns it into a, a blanket stitch. You do a tulip or a bicycle and take one stitch out of it, it turns it into like a crocus looking thing. It is pretty cool. So you can actually make some recipes. And like I did on the video yesterday, I showed the 790 stitching sideways. This little uh, presser foot has different direct directions that you can make the stitch sew sideways on these these upper end machines so that's how you can yeah if a stitch can sew sideways it'll be highlighted 
Um, let's let's go into our decorative stitch menu. That's your your squiggly little lines. Let's pick 101 and let's touch the tulip. Has everybody got a nice tall tulip there? Mm -hmm. All right. Touch your circle eye. I want to show you what some of these functions do. Now, the very top function, you can just tell it to stitch so many times. I don't even go there. You can tell it to stitch 10 times and stop, or 9 times and stop. But what I want to do is this mirror image. So touch these triangles, left and right mirror image, and, and watch the tulips bounce one way or the other. So if you had a big project, you couldn't flip it over, you can flip your stitch. So you can make your stitch go the right way. Now, upside down, right side up had no difference. Everybody asks me, what is this little scales? You can actually uh, adjust the um, balance of your stitch. If you're sewing these little tulips on a real stretchy fabric, they're not going to look like tulips. They're going to look wonky or <coughs> crooked. If you, or they'll be really wide apart. So what Bernina does to compensate for this is you test sew out a few, stit, few patterns and make it look like this picture and the machine will compensate for the stretch and balance out your stitch. <coughs> Pretty cool feature. <coughs> and there's no other option. So I just wanted to let you know this is your per stitch option. So depending upon which stitch you pick, you have um, a bunch of setting options per stitch. Now, I have changed the stitch a little bit because I have something yellow here. I can go down here. We have four options along the bottom. And I want to save it. And once I save that stitch, that's all you have to do. Every time I select the tulip, it will be in what I have saved it. <coughs> and if I sew it out on stable fabric and doesn't look right, I just come back in here and unsave it. It's that fast. So those, and then we have reverse option. You can actually sew in continuous reverse by touching this button down here on the bottom. I had a customer do this with their straight stitch and then saved it. And we couldn't figure out why your machine only ran backwards. <laughs> because it was told to. <laughs> but we found that out pretty quick. Because I went right to settings. And I have to go and tell my technicians all the time, I said, did you check the settings? Because Baby locks have a lot of settings too, and if they mess around with the settings wrong, it, uh, it can make a difference in the machine's performance. So anytime you're in a, in a stitch, uh, remember to hit that circle eye to see if there's options you want to play with. All right, I am going to go to some of these buttons over here on the right-hand side on the black area, and I know You've probably seen a lot of them already, but I'm just going to quickly touch base and reiterate. So home, home base on the 590s is up here. Home, home is on the 5790s is right. So you got sewing mode or embroidery mode. Now I'm going to turn, anytime you kind of get lost, turn that circle eye off and you're going to find your icons come back over here on the right hand side. So that circle eye can really, you know, mess with you a little bit. Now, <coughs> right next to your menu over here is a little flyout button. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Touch that. It's a great way to see more stitches at a time. And if you import a stitch, you have to use this flyout button to access the stitch from this little um, save. So on the 790. You can actually create a stitch, save it on a USB stick, bring it to the 590 and sew it out. You can actually copy a favorite stitch from your 790 if your 590 doesn't have it. Put it on a stick and sew it on your 590. So all stitches can be uh, saved out and then brought back in using this, this option right here. So something that most people don't even know was capable of doing. A, a gal has purchased a, a smaller 5 series and wanted a few extra stitches and I showed her how to have, make that happen and she was very pleased. Now if you don't want this fly out showing you have to hit the, the button to, to, to make it smaller. Alright, so let's go over here. We, we, 
went through the house, we went through all of our settings. Now, what is this little book? If I hit the, the question mark and the book, the book has like an on-screen manual on there. And it's divided up into several different areas. So you've got troubleshooting, FHS, which stands for free hand system, needles, embroidery techniques. So you have a manual built in to your uh, sewing machine. And it's this book. Then the next one down is a dress form or mannequin. And you have all these different icons here. These are different types of fabric. And this is where the question mark and then touching the icon helps you. <coughs> it tells you what type of icon or fabric that pertains to. So that little hide is leather, suede, cure, you know, these type of fabrics. So now if I touch that icon of the um, hide and I want to do a buttonhole in leather. So I'm going to touch the icon of buttonhole in the leather. It'll tell me the selected uh, stitch number for the buttonhole, the type of needle, the, the thread, and the foot. And if I click the green check mark, and I go back to sewing, it actually puts the foot on, it changes my width, it changes my pressure, foot pressure, and my tension. It, it, these are the default setting for leather. Is that pretty cool? It's called a creative consultant. Because a lot of times we're sewing and we pick up a fabric we haven't sewn for since we were in home ec in high school. And we don't know what needle or thread or whatever, whatever else. This creative consultant will tell you what Berninas do best with. Now if I don't want those settings, your CLR button, it stands for clear, it will put those settings back to uh, factory default just for what we changed recently. Uh, question mark, we, that's our, our uh, help, instant help. And eco, the eco button, go ahead and push that once. It turns the screen, turns your lights off, turns about over 50% of the power that the machine uses. So if you need to go run to the grocery store, get supper started, this is a great time to just put on eco mode, come back afterwards and it has all your whatever you're doing exactly to the stitch. Is there, I've gone into this accidentally. Yeah. If I double tap the screen, does it do that? Or it, did I just probably just hit the button? Oh, uh, you have to hit the button somehow. Okay. Now if you hold it in for like 20 seconds, a screensaver comes up. It's kind of meant for the uh, um, stores and dealers and that can have a nice little screensaver. Uh, different things pop up. See all the pretty models. Um, anybody jot down any questions at this point? There's a lot of different settings. There's a lot of different things. And you know, Bermino's motto is made to create. So you have the ability to literally create stitches, create whatever you want for your, uh, your design. Let's see about my cheat sheet here, see if I haven't left anything else out. No, I think I did pretty much cover what I had thought of for class. Let's go to our stitching mode. I do want to show you one setting that gets people in trouble sometimes. I'm going to select my normal foot, 1C, and I'm going to select the straight stitch. What, what will get people in trouble sometimes is this little plus symbol. So this is kind of a settings. This plus symbol on your machine is a combination mode or single mode. But when you touch it, it's waiting for you to select stitches to put into a combination. Most of the time this is used when you're doing alphabets. You can combine stitches too, but to get out of it, you have to touch it again to get back to the regular single mode. And pe people end up having to turn their machine off and on because they've gotten stuck in it. That might be what I did the other day then. Yeah, because you can, you can actually get plus mode and you hit the stitch here, it'll take three stitches and stop. Three okay. stitches and stop. And people, well, what's it doing? I've told it to sew. So. 
if you don't see this line coming down here, uh, it may be because that, see I just added one zigzag stitch and now I'm gonna add one set of that and one set of that. So now see this weird stitch combination I built just by adding stitches to it? Well, that's what I, what I ended up with. Yeah, and you get this goobly gop stuff here and the only way out is to by, by hitting there and now you got back to your normal stitch okay. mode. So just one of those, I'm trying to help you troubleshoot. The other troubleshoot is I turn it off, turn it back on. Yeah, but I did. It's, and then it was fine, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, very good. Um, what are those other two buttons on the left and the right of that one? What are those on, for? On, the five, on the 790, you, this is your stitch designer. You actually can design a stitch. So if you click your stitch designer, 790 and 880 are the only ones that have this. So I can actually just... I can design a stitch just by clicking anywhere and save it. Okay. Or I can bring in a stitch and uh, and then it looks, this is what it's going to look like over here if I sew it. And you can tell it to go right onto uh, a grid. There's a lot of different tool options here. And this is one of those, there's probably YouTube's on it somewhere on how to use this tool. And with the 790 you make it a triple stitch too just by clicking that. So it's the functions, and these are some of the reasons why I've moved people up from the 780 to 790 because this has this feature. All right, now I'm gonna hit my green check marks, the only way I can get out of this, and that's what the stitch would look like, and then it's gonna repeat it. So, pretty crazy looking thing. Now, this other one over here, it's a enlarged view. So that's like a, it views it in large. Now if I don't like that, when I click to here, I got my normal stitches again. But remember this fly out. It's a great way to see all your stitches at once. Now, another cute little option that you probably have been introduced to, let's <coughs> do it real, real quick, zero through nine search. I really don't like going through 14 menus to find stitch number 1329. That's one of my favorite stitches. One, three, two, nine, pow. There's my blanket stitch. So it, you do have this option to search by stitch number. So you'll memorize some of your stitches, your favorite stitches, and it's easier to, to use that, that search option. And then um, if I go and do my circle I, it gets how do we get rid of that? We just hit check mark. Okay. We hit X. The red X down. The red X. Thank you. That was a good idea. That's fun to know those were So just to kind of kind of review, go to the Bernina site. You can download this simulator for any any model you have if you want to play with it. Um, you know, it don't always have to be in front of your machine. Uh, you've got settings now to change they're already in your machine um, I just hope that you can get lots and lots of more value I out know, of your I machine. Have a question. yes you know <clears throat> sometimes when I'm you know, doing a bunch of piecing but I'm going to be cutting yeah and I want to make my stitch shorter how do I do that so it automatically like I want it to be a 2.0 when I turn on my machine because that's what I do with this machine maybe that's a great setting to review. Let's do that right now. Okay. So I'm going to go to my utility stitches or practical stitches. Go to stitch number one. Now we're going to go to our circle eye. So this is a this is a stitch setting. And use your dial. Make it a a 2.0. Oops. All right. Now there's all you have to do is hit this little floppy disk. And every time you turn your machine on, it will come at a 2.0. And it's in yellow because it changed it, right? right? Okay. Now there's another way. Let's let's do this because a lot of people uh, don't get the introduction to the, the saving feature as much. So there's a heart feature here too. You could do it this way, but it's, it's more keystrokes. Let's say you want to save your default setting, but you also have this, that you, this 2.0 you use a lot. So I'm going to select the stitch the way I like it. Maybe I'm going to add just a little baby zigzag to it. See, I've got a little baby zigzag. 
And I want to use this when I'm appliqueing. I do this on an applique with monofilament thread. You it takes a little practice, but you can do it. Now, I don't want to permanently come on every time, but I want to save it. So I'm going to touch my heart and I want to save it into the machine. So you want to use the arrow going into the folders. And I'm going to put it in folder one and I'm going to touch that. Now, once you touch that icon, it has saved it in the folder. You have to touch the icon. It won't save it unless you do. So now if I turn my, if I go into a different stitch now and go to here, oh, I don't want that stitch. I'm gonna go to my heart. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna retrieve it. So I'm gonna use this folder with the arrow coming out. I'm gonna retrieve that stitch. I'm gonna see if I put it in, there it is, boom. It just put it right back to that stitch that I collected. I think you could, you've got several, you can save four or 10 in every folder. So, you know, that's why they give you four folders. You can put all your zigzag stitches in one folder. You can put all your, your cute stitches in another folder. Just another thing to remember, like passwords, right? <laughs> all right. So circle I, go to your tabs over here and there's some settings in the buttonholes. I don't know how many people do buttonholes, but these machines do the most fantastic options on buttonholes. So select buttonhole 51. And we're gonna go to our circle eye settings. And I always remember the 16.0 is the length of my buttonhole default. So if I click on the 16.0, I can change the, uh, the size of the buttonhole by putting my button on this uh, yellow circle and turning, turning my uh, multifunction knob till I get to the size of my button. Now the machine will make a buttonhole exactly that size. That, that fast and easy and they're beautiful buttonholes. And you can do it manually but this is the quick easy way. So I'm going to back to my circle eye. So go to your cookie cup, cookie trail up here. Go to that eye. And do you see the 0 0.6? That's the slit width. These machines will do a wider slit in a buttonhole. So select it. It will do up to a 2.0 slit width. But it takes it away from the width of the beads. So I'll show you how to counteract that. So there's 2.0. I'm going to go back to my circle eye. Now, watch the, the slit width is two, two millimeters wide now in the middle of that. But my beads are really narrow. So I'm going to go to my stitch width and increase my bead width. And you got that. If it's too dense, you can take density out or put it in, take it out. So if you have kind of a thick button, you might want to do that. Exactly. Thick button. Or if you're doing it on like a coarse fabric, like a real coarse wool, coat woolen or burlap. <coughs> and remember, buttonholes can be a great hole for uh, drawstrings and stuff. They don't just, just don't have to be for buttons. They can just be decorative too. So I just wanted to, that's kind of a bonus section on settings. So, if, and if you liked it, you can save it. So getting more and more comfortable with your settings knowing kind of what they do, why they do them. And again, I get a lot of calls, what happened? And I just we go so through the settings. Get this download the simulator onto a computer or, yeah, iPad, or a laptop or whatever yeah. and and just mess with it and yeah. hit buttons exactly. and do whatever because where if I do it on my machine I might save it and not realize that I did it. No. Well that's why there's that factory default. <coughs> you can put everything back to factory default and then just go back and change your favorite settings. I was free motion quilting yep. and the bottom th or the top thread was showing on the black bottom uh -huh. and so I s had changed this tension to three but along the way it switches to five or six on me so is that something that I did or is that just were you using a straight stitch or something I think it was stitch? on a straight stitch yeah yeah that that's a new one on me I'm not okay. real sure it shouldn't change actually um, all these machines have an integrated upper tension unit Okay. So as you do a zigzag, 
the tension on one side of the zigzag is different than the other tension on the right side. Okay. And it's doing this with every stitch. I mean, it, it's pretty incredible. Mm -hmm. So you will notice that as you change stitches that every stitch has a different value for your tension because Bernina has decided what tension is best for that stitch. Okay. So if you go to a straight stitch, <coughs> um, and you select a straight stitch, your, your tension is 4.75. Mm -hmm. Zigzag, it's 4.25. So it's changing it automatically for that particular stitch. Yeah, and I had changed that down. Yeah. But okay. if you're using a stitch regulator, if you're using a free motion, you will have to change this upper tension to yeah. get your perfect stitch. Okay. And always change it a good unit at a time. Don't go 0.25 and expect a lot of change. Think of you playing the high-low game on TV. You know, you go, you try to find that value and keep finding the, the perfect spot. And I don't care how expensive a machine you buy, don't try black thread on top and white thread on the bottom. You, it, something's going to show somewhere. That's where I was. It's really hard to get any machine to be perfect. Yeah. Because, you know, you're going sideways, forwards, left, right, forward, backward. And the machine has to f try to find the perfect tension on every stitch. And something's going to show eventually. Yeah. Okay. So keep your threads fairly consistent. All right, let's call that good. Remember, if you like this video, subscribe to Bernina Jeff, and hopefully you will be able to create your perfect project. Thank you. Thank you.